What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today in the market was not necessarily what I would call the most interesting day. It was a very sideways trading, choppy kind of day in the market. So I'm not going to bore you guys with unnecessary details about a market that has not changed much from yesterday. But what I do want to cover is one of the most important conversations that we've seen recently from the CEOs of Wall Street and Congress covering several different interesting topics, but mainly Bitcoin its uses and several different details behind the scenes that we're not privy to seeing. I also do want to cover some key levels for the overall market, some things that I think will add some value to you guys in the back half of the video right i also want to cover one very key part of that gme earnings report that i saw that i think is very interesting i'm also going to put that in the back half of the video as well right so let's get into it guys if you haven't yet of course smash the like button engage with the video let's start off here with one of the most important conversations that we've seen in a long period of time between the wall street ceos and congress here we go thank you mr chairman so today i want to talk about how just for clear guys this is not going to be a two hour video like we saw for last one i'm sure you guys can already see it but this is going to be a three to four minute clip here specifically with this okay here we go criminals are using our financial system to move money to finance terrorists drug traffickers and sanctioned countries like russia and iran and north korea our witnesses are the ceos of the largest banks in the united states and they deal with this issue every single day. That's, I mean, it's, it says it so casually, but it is very much something that makes you go, oh, right. This, this is probably something that's happening. We don't see it. There's not headlines every single day, but it's probably something that is actively going on often, right? Here we Mr. Go. Moynihan, you are the CEO of Bank of America, so let me ask you. Criminal. If a terrorist <clears throat> group that wanted to attack the United States tried to move money through Bank of America accounts, do you have systems in place to identify that activity, to report it to law enforcement, and to shut it down? Uh, yes, we do, Senator. Okay, Mr. Diamond, you are the CEO of J.P. Morgan. What about you? If a terrorist <clears throat> group tried to Sorry. move money through J.P. Morgan accounts, do you have systems in place to catch it, to report it, and to shut it down? We have extensive systems in place, but no system is foolproof. Okay, but you do have systems in place. Extensive. Work on this every day. every day. And let me just ask all of you, in the interest of time, just raise your hand if you have those programs in place. Oh, good. Them. I see all the hands up. Look, I believe that none of you want your banks to be used to finance terrorist attacks. But let's be clear, none of you runs these anti-money laundering programs out of the goodness of your hearts. Back in 1970, Congress passed the Bank Secrecy Act to make sure that banks don't run a financial system that is open to terrorists and drug traffickers and rogue nations. Having to put in place a rule that says, hey, you can't finance terrorism. Yeah, we're putting, the place, we're putting this rule in place now because you guys kept doing it. We told you guys to stop doing it. You guys kept doing it. Now let's make it a law. So now if you guys break the law, we can send you guys to jail, which we're not going to actually do because you guys are bankers and we work for you. But we'll at least slap you guys in the wrist, take some of your money, and then give you guys back the money in case you guys fail. It's just an interesting system. But time passed and the crooks got more sophisticated. So after the 9-11 terrorist attacks, Law enforcement discovered the way terrorists had gotten around the Bank Secrecy Act, and Congress was then called on to update the laws to cut off future access, and that's what Congress did. Today's terrorists have a new way to get around the Bank Secrecy Act, cryptocurrency. Last year, an estimated $20 billion in illicit crypto transactions funded every kind of dangerous criminal. North Korea has funded at least half its missile program, including nuclear weapons, using the proceeds of crypto crime. And is crypto crime. That's going to be the name of this video. Israeli officials have confirmed that Hamas received millions of dollars through crypto transactions, including, quote, large sums from Iran. Mr. Diamond, you've been mm -hmm. CEO of JP Morgan for almost two decades. Can you explain why crypto is such an attractive financial tool for terrorists, drug traffickers, and rogue nations? All right, now this is going to be one of the more interesting parts here because his perspective does hold a lot of weight. Whether or not you agree with it or not, you can let me know in the comment section below. Here we go. I've always been deeply opposed to crypto, Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, and that is a use case. 
uh, because it is somewhat anonymous, not fully, and because you can move money instantaneously, and because it doesn't go through, as you mentioned, all these systems have built up over many years, you know your customers, sanctions, OFAC, it's, they can get bypass all of that. I, if I was the government, I'd close it down. Okay, well, that's what we're going to talk about. Because last week, federal law enforcement asked Congress to update the banking laws, saying, quote, we cannot rely on statutory definitions that are decades old to address the illicit finance risks that we face in 2023. And these law enforcement officials specifically called out the use of crypto to finance terrorist attacks. Now, the laws clearly need to be updated, but crypto lobbyists are working overtime to block any legislation. They claim crypto is special and it shouldn't have to comply with the Bank Secrecy Act, even if that means letting terrorists and drug traffickers and ransomware criminals and rogue nations move billions of dollars totally unrestricted. What is your opinion with that? That's my question for you guys. Do you guys think Bitcoin should be subject to the same checks and balances as everything else is? Or do you think Bitcoin slash crypto should be in its own world? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So I'd like to go down the line here. Maybe I can start with you, Mr. Shar. Do you think that crypto companies facilitating financial transactions should have to follow the same anti-money laundering rules that your bank has to follow? Absolutely, Senator. Okay, I like absolutely. Keep, let's go on down the line. Mr. Moynihan? Absolutely. If okay. Matter. Absolutely. All right. Positively, All right. certainly. The smile is interesting, right? Because this is the one time that Senator Warren actually agrees with the bankers. Now, as much as I do like when they disagree, when they do agree, it does make me think twice. Red flags across the board. Why is everybody smiling right here? But at the same time, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. You know, too much transparency can be bad. It means people can't live their lives. And obviously, no transparency can also be bad because, as you guys can tell, freaking missile programs or nuclear programs can be funded by crypto crime, if you will. All right, guys. But anyways, that was one of the most important parts we did see the video. You can kind of see where this is going now. They're just kind of, you know, shaking their heads, saying whatever they want to say to make themselves feel happy. But let's get into this part. After the GameStop earnings, which GameStop, of course, performed very well. The stock didn't necessarily do so well after hours. That being said, we did cover this on the weekend going into GME earnings. The implied volatility over 250 to 300% might not be the best one to play. That being said, guys, look at this, okay? This is coming from a bit of the GameStop call for my guy, Orlando. As, as with its previous round of earnings, GameStop said it would not be holding a conference call. No surprise here, they didn't have a conference call last time. Here we go. In the filing, GameStop noted that its board of directors approved a new investment policy Tuesday, permitting the company to invest in equity securities among other investments. What does this mean? They can basically become a fund, right? Now, the board has given Chairman and Chief Executive Ryan Cohen, the authority to manage the investment portfolio. So we are going to see Ryan Cohen start to do, in my personal opinion, just my thoughts. Let me just start off by saying that we could very well see, allegedly, by the statement made here by GameStop, see Ryan Cohen start to manage a portfolio for GameStop, a meme stock, if you will, in ways we probably have not seen a CEO or chairman of the board manage a portfolio before. And that, to me, is an important detail. It'll be interesting to follow. And I think that this is a probably a great decision for GameStop because when it comes down to a company that is just barely on the edge of becoming profitable, and don't get me wrong, like that's a great improvement from where they were. It's, it's definitely steps in the right direction. Just, but they're just barely you know, profitable, not profitable. They're, they're right here. If you have an investment portfolio just to get you over the edge, it's possible that they could see consecutive profitable quarters moving forward. I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know when this is going to move forward. I don't know when he's going to access to the fund or when they're going to see a good return on their investments. But this is nice. This, to me, is very nice. Anyways, um, that being said, guys, we are at a very important position right here for the SPY. We haven't traded much in the last two weeks. But I am seeing a key level here, roughly a 454 to 453, that I think needs to be held with the SPY. right here okay if we fall back down below this range i think we could be looking for some short-term downside here on the market we do get earnings tomorrow morning it is going to be very interesting to see where we gap up or gap down to also what happens next do we gap up and go or gap down and go showing very bearish or very bullish strength or do we gap up and close that gap potentially 
faking people out or shaking people out and then seeing move back towards the upside. This is not a prediction. This is just letting you guys know that if we do see rejection below that level, I think we are bearish over the short term. If we see a bounce again at that level, like a tweezer bomb here, one touch, two touch, I think we could be very bullish going towards back half of the year. And we're at that key level right now. All right, guys. So if you haven't already, of course, smash the like button, engage with the video. If you do want to trade with us, guys, live every single day with me and several other traders in the Discord, links in the description below. Trade with us for free until the end of the year. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Much love. Deuces.